Dimitar Kenarov, welcome to Moshna in Transylvania. A few weeks ago um, there was shale gas exploration work going on here. People are very upset about what's going on here. You have lots of experience concerning shale gas problems, so to say, in the US and in Poland. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about the differences or common things between the problems here and there and why what can we learn from the American and Polish experience for Transylvania, for Romania? Sure, sure. Yeah, in the States, uh, shale gas has, uh, uh, has enlarged greatly in the last couple of years. And uh, there's, there are tons of wells in Pennsylvania, in Texas, uh, in North Dakota, where they produce shale oil. Uh, but uh, but there the, the, in the States uh, exists a, a very, a very uh, unique business environment, investment environment as well as uh, a lot of uh, a lot of infrastructure a lot of services gas services that um, uh, create competition and lower the prices of, of drilling um, and so that's why you are able to develop in the states what they call economies of scale uh, and bring down the the price of gas now in my experience in Poland Poland started um, uh, in er exploring in earnest uh, in about 2007 and and uh, uh, right now it's the the Polish shale gas project is, has almost collapsed, and this is basic, basic economics of shale. Um, what has happened in Poland is that because of the lack of rigs, I can just give one example. In the States there are 2, 000, about 2,000 rigs. In, in the whole of Europe there are about 70. Uh, there, are no, uh, uh, there are no big services, or you know, there are very few services uh, uh, which are very expensive for fracking. Um, of course, also um, there isn't much infrastructure, uh, especially in the northeast of Poland, where there is a lot of agricultural, very pristine land. Uh, so uh, you need for, for for shale gas, you need to build a lot of a lot of infrastructure, a lot of pipelines, gathering lines, compressor stations, um, and also uh, even the roads are bad there. So you have problems from each and every direction. Population density is generally greater uh, in in Europe than in the states. Uh, when we're talking about big states like Texas or, 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 or Arkansas. Um, and so, and so in, in the end, although uh, you know, people have hyped up so much shale gas in, in Poland, what happens is that all these companies came in from the states, from Canada, some Polish companies as well, um, and they started exploring on over about a third of the territory of Poland, about 90,000 square kilometers. Uh, but soon the, the results were very disappointing because the costs were extremely high, about $15 million per well about three times what it costs in the states uh, the the shales are much deeper so that um, so that um, the the fracking and and the whole drilling is much more expensive um, there are all kinds of other problems uh, uh, with there is not enough gas flow Exxon Mobil left um, Talisman Energy another big company Marathon Oil the rumors that Chevron might also leave Poland so so in a sense uh, what has failed to happen in Poland is to create these big economies of scale and it, it's basically the lack of infrastructure the lack of the lack of investments the uh, huge investments in this um, mm -hmm. how many rigs are necessary for the exploration and later for the exploitation well Quite a few, actually. What's, the thing about the thing about the rigs is that uh, a lot of them are older models, so they don't they cannot do horizontal drilling. Let's say I talked to a manager of an oil oil uh, company in Poland who had just ordered a new rig from the states, and it, it takes 18 months to build, and it costs 40 million dollars. So for just one rig, so there are enormous capital, there's enormous, enormous capital investment in this. And if it doesn't pan out, I was talking to this manager, and he said, "Well, we're not drilling much, really." Because it's so, you know, there, there's not much interest at this point, so they're losing money constantly. Um, but uh, what I think people have to realize about shale gas is that unlike conventional gas, which where you need, um, you know, you, you have several wells per certain area, here you have to have hundreds of wells uh, covering the entire surface, cl clusters of wells. Uh, so, so even f only for the exploration uh, project, uh, exploration phase in Poland, you need. Uh, calculations about 300 wells only to find out whether there is shale gas. Uh, Poland has um, uh, f drilled all these years only about 50 and has fracked 10. So there isn't, there isn't even much uh, going on there. But, but, uh, but the thing about shale gas, yes, it, it, it requires enormous economies of scale. It requires, um, uh, after that, the, during the production phase, um, in Poland, for example, up to, up to 500 wells every year drilled. 
Um, new wells? Or? New wells. Uh, we're talking about new wells or refract old, old ones because what happens oftentimes with, with shale gas, and this is well, do, well documented, is that what the, what's called a decline curve is really high for in the first couple of years. So the first maybe two, three years, oftentimes uh, gas, uh, gas flow declines by f between 50 and 75 percent. And so a lot of these wells that you know, people say, oh, they're going to be working for 30 years. No, they're actually producing only for the first several years, and then they have to be either refracted again or capped and abandoned. Uh, so you constantly need to, need to um, dedicate more and more land to fracking. You have to keep the production going by drilling new and new uh, wells. And that, that, of course, creates a lot of land fragmentation that creates uh, enormous problems, uh, just the scale of it, for communities uh, in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. where, as I said, population density is generally higher. Mm -hmm. Can you say something about this um, open pits for the water that they get yeah. out of from the drill? Sure. Yeah. Well, there are, uh, to me, there are uh, three, so to speak, uh, uh, huge problems with shale gas. One is, uh, as I said, we're the, uh, the, the, the large size, the large scale of, 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 of development. The other What does it mean concretely? How much uh, space does one... Uh, um, um, drilling need? Well, in, in the States, uh, what's accepted as sort of a, a, a model right now is, a, is, an, uh, is about 640 acres. How, uh, what's, how much is that's that? That's about, I would say, a square kilometer and a half, a kilometer and a half square, something like this. Uh, for one for rig. one well, but what they do is that they build one, one pad and then from this one pad there could be 6, 10, 12, 20 wells going in different directions. Mm -hmm. so, so the thing about the scale is that you have to cover the entire surface. Uh, all these you know, units of 640 acres need to cover the surface so that this, this, this resource could be extracted as profitably as possible. Uh, now, uh, in, in places like Pennsylvania, where actually population density is similar to that in, in Poland, uh, that has created enormous problems uh, because um, you know, there's water pollution of wells. Oftentimes the water pollution actually does not come directly from the fracking. It comes from, um, it comes from um, defects in the, in the casing and the piping that go through the, through the aquifers. And this is, it just comes with the territory of oil and gas exploration. It, it's a matter that it, it, these thing, kind of things happen even with conventional wells, but because of the enormity of scale with shale gas wells, the more wells you have, the more accidents happen, of course. The, the industry calculates that about 6% of new wells new, uh, fail their casing and, and cementing, which means that methane uh, and other substances oftentimes leak into the aquifers. Now that percentage uh, high, uh, uh, jumps substantially in the first 30 years of their life because the materials get older, they rust and so on. So sometimes up to 50% of wells leak in the aquifers after the first 30 years. What about uh, the pits? Uh, and the pits and the other problem, so, so of course we have enormous, in order to, to, to frag the shale, we have enormous uh, amounts of water use, some, you know, calculation, eight, let's say 8 to 20 to, uh, million liters per, per frag job. Um, now, uh, about 20% of this water, 20 to 50 depends, comes back as what's called flowback. Um, comes back to the surface together with the gas. Now, this new water is not only laced with the original chemicals that were put into the frac fluid, but also it has uh, extremely high salinity, several times higher than seawater, uh, heavy metals and oftentimes radioactivity depending on the shale. So uh, this, this kind of wastewater that comes back, uh, they call it produced water in the, in the industry language, is extremely uh, difficult to treat. You know, desalination is, is very difficult. In Pennsylvania, they used to release that water in, um, in regular municipal treatment plants, which created enormous problems for several rivers in, in Pennsylvania and polluted those rivers. Um, now, there is a voluntary ban in the States. I don't know what voluntary ban means, but there is a voluntary ban uh, uh, on, on uh, dumping this kind of water into, into the rivers, into the waste, into the, the municipal treatment plants. And, and the most common practice right now in the States is what's called um, class 2 injection wells. Now, class 2 injection wells are usually empty wells. Uh, uh, in very great depths, where uh, the, the produced water from the shale, shale well is injected back into the earth in this empty, other empty well. Um, now, uh, that has also created problems in the States. Uh, aquifers, again, have been, have been uh, polluted. There have been uh, quite a few reports of earthquakes associated. Uh, there are small earthquakes 
nevertheless, they are there. Uh, in, this, in, in Europe, though, um, we, you, EU legislation does not allow um, for injection wells. So, uh, so basically the solutions for treating that water, for, for disposing of that flow back, are fewer than, than in the States. Um, and they're very expensive as well. So that adds up to the costs of companies usually. And that's why, um, you know, considering everything, when you, when you put everything together, and when you look at the economics of, of, of shale, of shale gas um, in Europe, um, you, 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 you quick, very quickly realize that this resource cannot be produced cheaply at all, and that, um, uh, and that it can never achieve that kind of scale that, that, that happened in the States. And, and the thing is that even sm what, I wanna, what, I, what I like to call that small, small, small scale shale gas uh, extraction is an oxymoron. You either have large scale extraction where uh, the economies of scale bring the, the prices down. But what we want to develop in Europe, you know, some people say, oh, we want to develop just a few, just a little shale gas industry. It cannot happen because, uh, you know, as I said, small scale, uh, this kind of small scale industry is an oxymoron. It just, it just doesn't, um, doesn't work with the economics. Um, and, and so I'm, my opinion generally is that, that shale gas in Europe um, would, not, would not be, you know, there's a lot of hype right now. A lot of people, a lot of companies, a lot of governments try to hype this resource as something new, that something would bring a lot of bring in a lot of jobs, bring in bring down prices. In fact, uh, it's uh, it's an it's more politics than than anything else in Europe.